can. I hope I'm live. If anyone could type into the chat to let me know, that would be really great. But okay. So my name is Alice O'Gorman and today we're going to be looking at um, how to play on files. Okay, I'm just going to wait for... Oh. Okay, so if we're all working there, I think... Oh, thank you so much, Eccentricors, for letting me know. Okay, so we're all working. Okay, so today, about playing on files. So before we start, I'll just introduce very briefly and go over, you know, what a file is. So, I mean, you have the A file, the B file, and so on. Files are just very basically sort of the vertical lines on the chessboard and the opposite to ranks, which would be this. Okay. So if we're talking about files, would anyone have any idea what pieces we'll be talking about mainly in this lesson? So what pieces are sort of best utilised for files? Anyone have any ideas in chat? Yeah, so it's going to be rooks mainly, and if not rooks, then, yeah, rooks then queens. Um, and these are the pieces that move, um, they move vertically or orthogonally, they move in straight lines, and they're so, for they're the ones that can use the files the best. So today we're going to go over lots of different ways to use files, yeah, rooks being on open files, the importance of controlling the file, how to control it, and also attacking along files and then also some semi-open files. So we're going to start by this game between Alekhine and Nimzovich. And we're going to move through the opening here because that's not as important. It was a French. And I'm just going to fly to this till we get to the key position. Is there a delay in chat? I think, I think there is. Okay, I might see if I can fix the delay in chat. Give me two seconds. And while we do that, if anyone could have a look at this position, this is the key position we're going to be looking at and have any ideas about what white might play here. Okay, I actually can't see the chat now because I've moved it to, so I can try see what's going on with you guys. But if anyone can type into chat any ideas they might have, I can see it now. Okay. So it's a complicated and tricky enough position actually. But the move that was played here is B4. Now, can anyone see what the point of B4 is? Oh no, I can't see chat at all, oh dear. I'm just gonna go back to the way it was, sorry about this. I'm not a tech expert in the slightest. Okay, but while I'm doing this, I can keep, <laughs> I can keep talking about this position. So if we look at before, the idea is very simply to open up this, um, this file, okay. Chat should be back, okay. So the idea is to open up the C file. And while black can push, white through BBN before has gained space and this suits them, so black decided to take. Okay, so now the key thing here is there is this open, open C file. But who does it benefit? Because when there's an open file, 
What matters is who can control it. So who do we think controls it here? Yeah, well done, I've seen your chat to open up the C file. Yeah, that's exactly why it was played. But it was more than just to open it up. It was to open it up, but White believes they're the ones that's going to be able to be in charge of it. And so if we look at this knight, what squares can it move to? So the knight's only options really are to move backwards, which is obviously no good. It's further putting a piece on the back of the board, hindering development. Oh, hey Paolo, thank you, so chat's working. And secondly, um, it obviously can't take and going backwards would be bad. So that means black's got a piece on the file, which means if they ever put rooks on c8 or c7, it's not going to be so good because they're not actually controlling it because they're blocked by the knight. So that's what's actually important here. So bishop goes back. And now knight into um, d6, putting a knight on a powerful outpost. A five and a five. Does anyone understand why a five was played? This is a really clever move to do with control on the file, but can be a bit confusing. Firstly, the idea if they take a second file has been opened, and this is really good for white because they can control both of these now. Yeah, okay, they can play knight f5 and knight c7 to get it off. Maybe now they've played f5, they can't do that. And they can, it will just take a while and be very slow, and this knight isn't doing much over here. The knight will be bad on e7, and the knight on f5 or g6 will also be quite inactive. So this sort of plan to get them off. Followed by moving the knight here. Well, these knights really aren't doing much. So a5 was played. And the idea is that if they take, it suits them. Because while it opened the file, the square that white wants to belt their bishop on is this b, um, b5 square, because it puts further pressure on this knight. And so to stop this, black has to play a6, making this pawn quite bad. Because if not, white's going to get an a6 themselves. So that's the idea here. So after here, black played their knight back. They wanted to remove this good knight from um, d6. So takes, takes, and now a6. And after queen moves, the white bishop can develop to the square they want to develop to without any fear of being pushed with the a pawn because they push them themselves. But this is more than good than just having a good piece developed. It puts pressure on this weak knight, which is going to be followed up by rook c1, c2, and then after castles, the other rook to c1. So black develops their pieces, castles, and h6 was played. And why, why h6? That looks a bit random. What's the purpose of that move? Yeah, so it's to stop the knight coming to g5. Forking the queen and the pawn, forcing the queen to g6, a square it doesn't want to be on. Yeah, to prevent knight g5. So h6 is played. And now white just gets this file. And as you can see, they're starting to put pressure on the file. And black, black can't just really drop their knight back, allowing into the seventh. Their knight has to stay. And while their knight's being attacked twice, so it needs to be defended, white simply wants to just get more pieces on the file. Queen back to defend it again. More pieces on the open file. And then they shuffle their pieces around until they all have the maximum pieces on the open file. So this is what happens when there's an open file. Both 
both um, sides want to control it. As you can see, white's control is much more active here because they're looking down at this bad knight. Okay, so what's the next move? This is a really, really clever move by white. Anyone have any guesses? Or be able to figure it out? So if we look at what's going on, all this pressure down this open file has led to a pin on the knight. And the knight's being pinned in both ways. So when a piece is being pinned, we want to attack it some more, right? Put some more pressure on it. Is there any maneuver that can get some more pressure on this knight? Why didn't black play rook a b8 and wouldn't it have been better just to play rook c7? I was thinking the same thing. I'm not sure why they played rook b8 and when I was analysing this game earlier I couldn't come up with a reason. Yeah, so if we look at this I don't know why they played that instead of rook c7 straight away. Probably did have a reason a strong player, I'm just... I really can't tell you. But yeah, okay, so well done. Bishop a4, then push the pawn. So drop the bishop back. With the threat of b5 next go, which will be winning. So they're piling the pressure down this file. Does the engine approve of rook ab8? No, it doesn't. It doesn't think it's the right um, way to play it. So how can black stop b5? Well, it's not very easy to stop aside from playing b5 themselves. So that's what they did. And it just buys them more time. Because after takes, what do I mean by it buys them more time? Hi. Um. Well, it buys them more time because the knight is pinned to this rook, so we want more pieces defending the rook. Was this an online game? No, this was between Alexander Alekhine and Aaron Nimzovich. Um, both, I think, were playing long before online chess was a thing. Alekhine was the fourth world champion, so he'd have... I don't think this was online. Rook AB8 was the plan. Okay, so it buys them more time because black needs to get more pieces over because they can play rook here, king here, and then after bishop back with the same plan, king d8, and now b5 isn't as effective because the rook is defended. Now, this is a position I want to think about, everyone to think about for white. You've got all your pieces set up in the perfect positions. Your rook, both rooks and the queen are look, staring down the open file where black is having to defend this knight. The knight can't move because it's pinned to the queen. <laughs> Hand slip, yeah. Before my slips, they were just dropping pieces by mistake. That might have been what happened. Okay. Okay, white should improve the position of the knight. Yeah, white should just improve their position in general. That's the idea. They've got everything set up perfectly. They improve the position of the knight. I think the knight's quite well placed, actually. So they played h4. Okay, so now we have to think for black what to do here. Can anyone spot any good moves for black? It's not easy. It's not easy because there actually isn't any. So this is Zugzvan. Whatever black plays here, they're going to lose. And we'll go through this. If they move this knight, they simply lose the piece. If they move the rook, they lose the piece. Same goes for this rook. If they move it, they lose the piece. If they move their king, they lose to this pin. Queen e8, same goes though. So this queen had a job. This queen was protecting the rook. 
d5. So if black moves any of their major pieces, they've got such a mess because they're so inactive, they're all tied down. So if no major pieces can be moved, let's look at pawns. What about h5? Okay, yeah, so someone suggested g6, which is the best move here, but we'll look at h5 first. The problem with h5 is it allows knight g5. And the knight's coming into f7 next go, which is not really stoppable, followed by knight d6. So that's why h5 can't be played, because it gives up this key square. So g6. So how about h g6 or h5 to prevent their white knight from coming to g6 and attacking that way? Well, the knight's plan, yeah, if you thing is, g6 is fine because it doesn't give up any squares. But if you play h5, you're giving up this g5 square. And they're coming in check. So if g6 gets played though, what would you do as white? Yeah, someone played g3. That's a fine move. So is king h2. And so is king h1. And the thing is, black has no good moves here. Yeah, rook c5 is also playable. The thing is, white can just waste a move, just play something random force black to move again. Now they don't have the waste of a move g6, they have to make a move. They go g5, you just take it. And the knight ends up in g5, coming into the position. So this again is Zug's final lost. So that's why Nimzovich didn't even bother playing. g6 here, after h4 they just resigned. So yeah, you're just waiting moves for white. That's exactly. So if we want to go through this position though and kind of figure out why this is so winning, well, what white did is they created this open file for themselves. They put their pieces on it in the most active way, pinning black's piece down, so black is forced to defend, slowly made improving positions, moves until black. Well, black simply had no options, and every single move they made lost. So that's that game, and I hope it illustrates really nicely how great having the activity on an open file can be. If anyone has any questions or if I'm going too fast or don't understand anything, just type into chat at any point. I'm happy to explain. Yeah, Alec Hines gone. Okay. So now we're going to move on to something slightly different about files and we're going to look at attacking down them, which can be really fun. So this is actually for black, so I'm going to flip the board here. And this is a tactic, you know, see if everyone's awake and can figure this out. Does anyone know what the move might be for black here. Keeping in mind we're thinking about playing along files. Okay, someone said it there, knight g3. Okay, they just take and take and king here. And what's the follow-up? Yeah, so knight g3, you've opened the h file, absolutely brilliant, but what's the follow-up? Queen a7. Okay. So if queen a7, why can't, can white just take here? Maybe, maybe there's no need to even take, just play something like knight b6 and block the file. But yeah, okay, so king e7, lots of people are saying it, well done, and it's a lovely, lovely move. You've got a file open, and what pieces are best for the file? The rooks and the queens, so you need to get them into the game. And no matter what um, white does here, 
they just make a move. And this is unstoppable challenge. So you're blowing up the files using your rooks, which are brilliant along open files, sacking both rooks on h1. And queen, h8, king here, and finally checkmate. A really spectacular position from an actual game was played. I can't, I, remember, I know white here was Alexander Bogorin, but I actually can't remember black, which is quite a shame because they were the one who won this game. But yeah, it's a really beautiful idea. Okay, now we're going to look at a slightly different version of this. So we're going to keep in the idea of trying to open the H file with our rooks. And we're going to look at a game instead. Well, king, the key seven move is the delayed variation of the bomb cloud. Oh, I didn't know that. Bishop H6 stops the mate. Does it? We'll check that. So, okay, so Bishop H6 isn't able to be played here because, as you can see, this bishop's pinned to the king. So this bishop can't move from the line. Oh no, black doesn't want to be playing that. To here, bishop h6 isn't a legal move. And even if it was, I think we could just take it anyway. But yeah. Is king e7 better than king d7? Well, king d7 and knight e5 check runs into probably more difficulties. And after king e7, now knight can just come back to g4 defending the h2 square. Yeah, that looks... I think that will probably be the refutation. So yeah, that's why king e7 is better. It just avoids all checking ideas. And king e7, we're not worried about this. Goes a simply take. And it's just getting a rook out of the way, so maybe now it's just a single rook sacrifice. Okay, so after you're saying after queen h8, bishop h6, okay, so here, oh, you're looking at queen here, no, okay, yeah, I see your, yeah, I see the idea, but oh, yeah, you're right, sorry, that's a good, so Bishop should be taken here first. Remove it. Yeah, well done. I didn't spot that. And now takes and the queen can't block. So yeah. If king d7, white can exchange the bishops and pay knight b6, right? So if king d7. Yeah, so thank you, MG, for pointing that out. That was a very good spot. So here, King D7, if they exchange, can Black just continue with their plan? They don't have to take back because they're not in check anymore like they were on E7. So the plan is just the same. Okay, that's that position. And the idea is just to blow open the H file, use your rook standard and go for checkmate. Yeah, it's a really great mating idea. But okay, this game. So this game came, we'll flip the board back. Flip board. Came from the Petrov opening. So don't let anyone tell you the Petrov is a boring position. The games can be very exciting. So after this, okay, so we get to a position with opposite side castling. So opposite side castling games really lend themselves to attack. And 
they simply just lend themselves to attack because you're much more free to throw your pawns at the king. Like black isn't worried about playing something like a5 and white isn't worried about h4. Well, they're worried about g4 here because the knight hangs, but in general, pawns can be thrown at the king, pieces can be thrown while you're not exposing your own king. So opposite side castling is really aggressive. Okay, so we know throwing pawns and opposite side castling is a really good idea because it opens up your rooks to the king and it opens the files against them. Yeah, Fabiana has a lot of exciting wizards Petrov. He really does. I'm a Petrov player myself and I stand by it. I think it's a really, really great, exciting opening when played with certain lines. Okay. So what does white do here? Well, white goes h4. So the king is sitting on g1, on g8, and white just wants to get their rook simply with it. So h4, try to open up this h file. Okay, the game continues on, pieces are just developed. White plays bishop d4. After c5, they take one of the pieces defending black's king. And okay, they need to continue with their attack. They go queen f4. This defends the knight on f3, meaning g4 is a more playable move in the future. And after d5, they go h5. So they're continuing this plan. They want to open up the h file. A Kramnik versus Fabi 2018 candidates are lit. I will, I will check that out. Thank you. So rook here. And now g5. So the idea really simply is just to try to open up the files against the king. Okay. And what do we think of the move g6? Was this the correct move for black to play here? Or does black have better options? So what are we thinking about g6? Is it a good move? And if not, just not even lines and variations, just what are the downsides to this on sort of a principled level? Okay, so lots of different ideas here. Yeah, someone suggested queen b8, that's probably a, a better shout. Queen b8 trying to swap off the queens if white's attacking. Always good to get the pieces off. Okay, so yeah, people are saying it's not. So the idea is h6. Yeah, d4 again. I think d4 is a much better move. And g6 opening up this bishop against the knight, pinning it. Yeah, so hold in the defense. Okay, but I don't think h6 is the right way to play this. And why h6 isn't right, all of a sudden this rook, it's not really in the game. It's sitting facing these two pawns. Yeah, g6 is bad just because of the h file. That's just simply the right, just, that's it. You're opening up the h file, allowing this rook to be active. And white's goal here is to open up the h file and you've just done it for them. So h takes g is the right way to play it. And after pawn takes back, how to continue. So g5 was what was played. And after bishop here, a really spectacular move by white was played. I'll give everyone a few moments because it's not easy to spot. And if you do, I'll be really impressed. And it's very lovely. So rook h6, rook h6 is interesting, but after bishop takes, not sure the follow up, yeah, rook h7, so well done. That is the exact move. It's very similar to the idea we had before. The king comes here and now What's the follow-up? Mm -hmm. 
on page six? I'm not sure what someone's saying when they say queen h6. How can the queen get there? Queen f7. Queen f7 is right, followed by rook h1, which will be mating, or followed by bishop takes here. And this is simply unstoppable mate, which is why black, who has a 2750 pairs, you know, they spotted this and they didn't take it. So they played d4. Okay. And after bishop c4, queen here, what's the final go? Before queen h6. Oh, instead of g5. Okay, so bishop h queen h6 instead of g5 wouldn't have been so good because they can just go bishop g7. Or maybe the knight hangs as well. I'll just go back to address the queen h6 point for someone in chat there, because yeah, I see why it's a move you could be playing. But here, queen h6, I'd be wondering if they can simply, oh, not take the knight, the pawn's not pushed, but bishop g7, and the king is running. This attack actually isn't going anywhere. So that's why instead, pawn takes. Yeah, does that make sense? Okay. Bishop there. Rook here is the better way to play it. To d4, bishop c4, queen here. And let's see if we can get the winning blow. Okay, knight e5. Okay. Knight e5. Let's have a look at this. I think the bishop can just take it if there's not a reason why they can't. Oh, maybe bishop takes here. Okay. But queen takes them. And the queen takes f7. King takes, and now the rook can't come to here because of the bishop, which is quite, yeah, is an annoying spot. So knight e5 looks like a good move, but I think the queen can just take, and black should be fine. Okay, so rook e1. Rook e1's interesting. So you guys are coming up with lots of good moves here that I have to... What if the queen just moves? I'd say the queen could just move. This could still be good because you probably have takes here now. And this might be another win. It is a yeah, I like the idea of getting the rook, pushing the queen away, so you can take and come. You can come in to f6 and then get the rook on the open file against the king. But yeah, someone said in chat there, queen h4 is the way to play it. It's the simplest and cleanest way. Doesn't mean rookie one is a bad move at all, or any of the other moves. What's being threatened here? Well, if, I don't know, black plays something, there aren't many defending moves. You simply just get another rook there. Okay, let's see if they take, if they take here, actually. Yeah, rook takes g7. King takes, queen here, and after king here, what do we play? Anyone spot the move?
Yeah, Queen G6 with this pin. And let's say the king comes here back. And now, yeah, so everyone's spotting Queen G6. Well done, everyone. That's really good. And now, final blow again. Any ideas? You're playing with this pinned F pawn once again. Yeah, G6. And mate is forced. Because it's hard to stop, if not impossible to stop, Queen H7. And then Queen H8. Okay. So what that game was really about was just looking at an inventive way to open the H-file to get a big attack. Because when you cast it opposite sides, you really want to be playing on the file against the king. Okay. So I'm going to move on to another idea now. So we're going to look at this position here to start with. And this is just sort of a warm-up position into the idea that we're going to be looking at later. So as you can see when we're talking about files here, it, white has the semi-open file against this e6 pawn. Okay, so when you have a semi-open file, you know there's a weakness here and it's isolated, so you're going to be wanting to attack it. Bishop h3, well done. So why bishop h3? Not knight g5 is my question to the chat. Because you want to get more pieces on this pawn. So why not this way? What makes bishop h3 better? e5. Yeah, that's really good. Well done. So the point I wanted to illustrate here with this position is when you've got all your rooks and queen lined up against this weak pawn, if you play something like knight g5, they can push the pawn, getting rid of their biggest weakness. Now you've got to make sure at all times when they've got a weakness, it stays weak and you don't let them away with anything. So, bishop h3. Attacking the weakness and pinning it, stopping e5. And as someone else said, if you play knight g5, you also allow knight d4. So they have to play knight back to defend the pawn. And now you go knight g5. And you've just played this without removing their weakness. And as we can see, when you've got a semi-open file against a pawn, you can often win a pawn. And the pawn is one here. It can't be saved. So that's that position. Now I want to show a game where we can maybe use this idea. So if we go through this game here, I'm going to fly through this opening fast just to save some time and get to the bit we need to get to. So we can learn about semi-open files. Oh, instead of knight d8, what are defending with the king in the last position? I'm not going to go back to it, but if you can imagine, you also have knight g5 check, forking the king. So you know the way if you, if you bring the king to f7 to defend it, knight g5 check will fork the king and the pawn. So it's the same idea, you just put more pressure on it. If that makes sense. Okay, so here, this is the position I want to talk about, f5. Firstly, let's have a look at why f5 is played. So we'll go back, take in this whole position as a whole, what's going on. So materials equal. White's got a good amount of space. They've got more advanced pawns. But what can anyone say about these, these bishops compared, white's bishops compared to black's bishops? The main thing I'd say is white bishops are quite active. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for thanks for bearing with me and doing the calculation there. Um, 
So wise bishops are quite good because they're coming one to c if they they come like get some use some arrows coming to c2 the queen here this attack is really strong and this bishop is out of the game so white's got a lot more activity here so to deal with this potentially strong bishop what was played was f5 yeah someone said that the b7 this bishop is weak it is out of the game Okay, so f5 was played. What is the biggest downside to f5? So what can white do here? A little hint as we're talking about semi-open files in these positions. Yeah, e6 is weak. E takes f6. Well done, everyone. That's the right idea. So you take. And when they take back, all of a sudden this pawn is weak. So white now has a decision. Do they take... Ooh, they're not letting me move pieces. Do they take here? And do this trade or not? And white decided against this. And they decided against this because if you see they have this really strong rook and queen bearing down on this pawn. This pawn can't be pushed, so it's a terminal weakness. So instead defend your own pawn and hopefully win it later. Yeah, don't take on e6 yet. Keep the pressure on e6 and don't trade it for a pawn of your own that's not really under any stress. So queen here. And now as we looked at earlier in that previous position, black really wanted to push this pawn. And I know black can't do it straight away. But white goes bishop f4, and that's holding down the e5 square. That stops the pawn, this pawn ever being pushed here at some stage, keeping control of it. So yeah, bishop f4, really good move. Yeah, so threatening mate, defending mate, and now. After here. How do we think white should be playing this? Bishop a6, they play bishop b1 just to get it off this open file so it can't be attacked. Yeah, bishop e5, someone said there, that's the right move. You put the bishop here, getting rid of this bishop holding this dark square. So after takes, takes, this pawn can never be pushed and you're in an optimal position looking down at it. So you've got the rook in the square, meaning they can't push it. So what are you going to do next? Simply going to maneuver your pieces to look at the pawn. So you're attacking it. Queen here. So now white's use, black is using their semi-open file, looking down at your pawn. Hi there. Hello there to Nicholas in chat. Okay. So the move played is f4. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and also someone pointed out they're removing their black scope bishop, that's right. Queen here. Queen here. And bishop back. Okay. So you've got all your rook and queen and rook looking down at this e6 pawn. What's the next idea? What are you doing now? The next maneuver using the semi-open file the best you can. You've stopped them pushing their pawn and you've got three pieces looking down. Yeah, so the idea of bishop, yeah, bishop d3 is a little better yet if you spotted that there than c2 because they can just snap your bishop off if you go to c2, unfortunately. So the right way to do it is bishop d3. Yet again, not g4, because they just take. And they can take on. Let's have a look at some. So if they play g4, take here. And I think the issue with f5 is the e pawn can take. And you've got rid of their weakness, and you've actually lost a pawn here. I know you can take here. But you've swapped their weak pawn 
for another and you've got yourself like this deep pawn now is weak and isolated you've improved their pawn structure you've got yourself double pawns so strategically it's probably not the right thing to do okay so instead of attacking e6 what about playing f3 i think queen f3 oh f3 instead of four king f2 rook h1 and queen h6 Okay, I like the idea very much, but I don't think you have enough pieces to do this just yet. So if instead of f4, you go f3 with the idea of king here, rook here, and here. Yeah, it's very inventive. I like it. It's probably really strong as well, a different way to play this position. But you don't actually have that many threats because when the king comes back here, you can't really take because the queen's on it. Or well, maybe you do have threats actually. Maybe you're threatening bishop takes here. A lot of the times because a pawn takes back, you mate. I know doing a lot of arrows it is really confusing. If queen takes back, you pin. So yeah, maybe that's very that's a very good idea and probably a practical good way to play in this position. So f3 I think is a good move. Okay, let your opponent suffer with these six weakness. Why not bishop d3 after f4? So why not bishop d3 now? Is they'll just take it. They'll do the trade. And you also want to get your final piece on the e-file first. You want to improve all your pieces so they're the best possible. And now black made a mistake moving their bishop, allowing your bishop to d3. Okay, so rook back, trying to get another piece defending it. Oh, you thought bishop can see it? Yeah, no, it just moved back there. Okay, so you get another piece defending it. And now b4. So this is removing the piece from its good square on c6 and trying to get it to have to defend on d6. And why is the piece better defending on c6 than d6? Any ideas why this rook is better suited to the c file than its d file? Yeah, so p the both suggestions there are right. Um, the c file is on an open file, which is much more active, and someone spotted the lovely idea of when the rook is on d. Six, you might have queen a3 ideas but basically the crux of it is it's more active on c6 and yes there are tactical ideas when it's on d6 too so that's why b4 is played queen back b5 yeah sorry now turn there force the c if the c file is opened exactly force the rook to d6 okay now you get the final piece into the game on g4, attacking this weak pawn. And when they defend it, what's the winning move? Someone might have actually suggested earlier not to give you a big hint. But what's the final, final straw here? Okay, rook c1. Rook c1 is quite good, I think. But the problem after rook c1, I know you're getting an open file. Oh, does not let me move these again. So if rook c1, why won't it let me do that? some technical issues here it might be my wi-fi it's quite slow i'm very sorry so after rook here oh it's really not wanting to move pieces today i'll just talk about why rook c1 isn't the right idea it just takes extra pressure off this e6 pawn and you want to keep holding down on it unless you actually have another something you're doing really aggressive 
So bit of page three to push the pawns again, it's good. And these are all probably fine plans to play. Bishop h3, yeah, if you get the pawn to g5, you displace the rook. But nothing's better than queen a3. And why queen a3 is so good is it attacks another weakness on, well, I know it's not a semi-open file, but you're using this file to look at this weakness and attack it with your queen. So what are black's options to defend it? Well, they can't push it because you'll either take it on passant or just take it. So they have to defend it. So how can they do this? Well, if they move either of their rooks back, you take on e6. So if they go something like this, you can take here. So, okay, queen e7. And what happens? after queen e7. I don't want an arrow. I want to move this queen to e7. Mm, just give me arrows. Okay, so I'm just played, but okay. Queen here. We'll look at queen e7 first. Yeah, queen e7 simply runs into um, f5. And what about queen d7? Mm -hmm. And after rook takes d5, why can't rook take it? I'm not just struggling myself to see the issue with this. I'm sure there is quite a simple issue with queen e7. Could it be? Anyone spot it? Yeah, so queen d7 is better, but what's the problem with it? I think if I'm right, the problem is rook c1. Yeah, well done, Nicholas. Rook c1. And here you're attacking this bishop and you're threatening to take it because if queen takes, you can just pick up the rook. And they need to move this bishop and then you can take here. So yes, yeah, so I said black is just terrible. That is right. Black's pieces are so inactive, so you just activate the rook, I think, after queen d7. I think that should be winning. So that's why rook f7 was played, just giving up the pawn. And then from here on, it is just a nice win. But how to finish it? Okay, queen here, and queen here. Why can't the black queen take on b5? Defending isn't harder than attacking. You're very right there. If there's only one right move to find, it cannot be easy always to find it. But queen e5. Does that not just blunder the pawn on b5? Yeah, queen e5 is on said. King here. Final tactical tactic of the day. White to play and win.
Okay, rook e8. What's the plan with rook e8? I'm not actually seeing what you're threatening. Yeah, as some people are pointing out, g4. Brilliant move. And why is g4 so good? Mm -hmm. So rookie seven, I guess, but simply g5 is the threat. Yeah, and it's someone putting the mate there before g5, and then you're going, well, not quite queen e2 because they're taking. But this king is going to get mated very quickly. And black resigned here. Because if they play something like queen d3, can we see the follow-up? The move here is tricky. It's actually king h2. I'll give you that one because it's an impossible one to find. With the idea of avoiding any checks. And after something like queen e4 to try trade them. You can actually simply take and be a winning endgame. But more than that. Check back and now we're going to go over these tactics again because it's a bit tricky but yeah you've got loads of them on I'm sure everyone's saying it's right queen h5 is also really good oh I'm getting loads of chat in now and you take the queen queen d4 is better because it doesn't hang your own queen but yeah you've got loads of ideas with g4 Queen h5 and it's all mating and it's too tricky. Black resign. I actually don't have time to go over this position in as much detail as I'd like to. Everyone else saying f5. f5 is also definitely winning. The attacks are just so big this game is over. It actually ended here. Mario is a bit messy there at the end. There's just so much to calculate and not a lot of time. But yeah after here king h6 and the most important move to spot is g4, because now all of a sudden you have g5 threats, you have queen h5 threats, f5 is not winning, let's go back, it might not be. So here, yeah, I'm actually not sure what the mating idea with f5 is, but after queen f4, f6, it looks quite difficult to defend while there might not be a mate. And maybe there is perpetuals along here. With queen b1, oh, queen b1 and queen takes f5. So yes, f5 doesn't work. But the small tactical issues of that game are really not what's important. The main idea is getting all your pressure on against a semi-open file, moving all your pieces around it and eventually trying to win. So if we go back to the this bit of the game. This bit is what really matters. As we can see, we've got our rook looking down at this e6 pawn, this rook. We've moved our bishop around, we've got rid of their pieces. So you put a rook on the d5 square. And now a move like queen a3 just overloads the position. Even if there isn't a mate, I think you can go into winning rook endgame. I'm sure you can. <laughs> My brain is not, up for, is not um, able to calculate all this that fast, but you're probably right. 
So I hope that game made sense to you. I actually wanted to get something else in, but there was a lot of material there to cover today, so we didn't quite get around to it. But I hope you have a better idea now of how to play on files. There's lots of good ways to do it, but the main things are really important to control them, as we saw in the first game. And then also attack down them, open them up against the king. And also, if there's a weak pawn on them and they're semi-open, put your pieces on them, make sure they can't push that pawn and slowly overload. And if that all made sense then, if there are any questions, um, just type into chat and I'm happy to answer them or in comments at any time or any feedback at all is really welcome. Um, and if not, so thank, every thank you so much everyone for watching today. Um, I hope you learned something and probably see you, I think, next week. Okay, bye.